Well, hey, welcome to another episode of Digging Deeper. Robert here with the one, the only, Mariah Sherman. Hola. Hello. Um, <laughs> as well as a first timer to the Digging Deeper podcast. Everyone say hello to Sarah Magara. Sarah. Hello. Sarah, I got to tell you that for the longest time, um, I heard everyone mispronounce your last name <laughs> until you told them and you said it just rhymes with my first name. Yes. Like it's Sarah Magara. And I'm Sarah Magara. Yes. And now everybody says your whole name all together now. They Absolutely. Just, yeah. Have you noticed that? Yes. They all say Sarah Magara. Yeah. But you know. <laughs> it's Did great. You know I love that it. When you were getting married. I didn't realize until... Maybe we were talking about marriage and I put, you know, the two, the, and two, yeah, put the two and two together, the first name and the last name. And, oh, it was a moment. Did Everybody you, always talks about how good of a name it is. Did you yeah. go up or down alphabetically when you got married? What a random uh, my, question. My last name, <laughs> my last name before I was married is Hunnell. Oh, so okay. I up, yeah. Not bad. I was Bronson. Oh. So I was first in line for everything. Yeah. And I went all the way down to a Sherman. Wow. That is true love, ladies I don't know and gentlemen. If I've ever to drop so far alphabetically the for a man. Order of your last name change. I've never considered this. Yeah, I was I a don't great think I have factor either. of life. But it's worth it. Well, Sarah, you know, because it's your first time, how long have you been part of Rice City Church? We have been at Rice City just shy of two years now. Wow. What? I know. It seems like we've I just been it was here way forever. longer. It feels longer. It feels like because you guys, you and Michael, Michael's your husband, has just, you guys both have just jumped in with both of your feet and you guys are involved in so many different things. I mean, you went and built a house this weekend yep. in Mexico with a group. And I know that that's not your first home that you've built or your first uh, involvement with YWAM, which is a ministry down across the border. Um, you're pretty involved in that. You also lead a small group. We do. Yeah. And so we're actually talking. Mariah also leads a small group. Yeah. We're, we're talking today about Rooted, which is something that with your small groups, you actually kind of became the test subjects, if you will. The guinea pigs. The guinea pigs. Yes. Of, of what this looks like. And so I want to kind of talk about a few things because I obviously kind of definitely talked about Rooted in a strong way. I'm a big oh, yeah. like fan. I'm very passionate about so it. So are we. And I know that Absolutely. you are too about it because you've experienced it mm -hmm. firsthand and you've seen the life change that happens. You've seen um, the transformation that can occur. But let's talk about the why behind before we even kind of address the what. And so the why behind Rooted for, for us really is we wanted to get more effective at making disciples. And so let me ask you too. You know, throughout this last session, these 10 weeks that you experienced as you went through Rooted, how did you observe people becoming more committed disciples of Jesus Christ? Well, first it starts with the skeptical um, stage. Ooh, I like that. So everyone was so excited to do Rooted. Like Robert was excited. and But then there was a skeptical side of like, Ugh, you think I'm going to go through a 10 week thing and it's going to be so good. And we even talked to, I, I talked to other people who had done it at other churches and they were like, this is a game changer for you or whatever. Yeah. And every time someone hyped it up a little bit, I was kind of like, Meh. <laughs> like it, it can't possibly be that great. Yeah. So we all went through like the skeptical phase. Me included. Yes. Robert yes. included. Um, our like, our life group is run by three couples and we all kind of were like, one of the three couples was like, whatever, I guess we'll do it. <laughs> um, and then by the end, all three of us were like, that was so formative for every person in our group, including ourselves. And then we were the people that were like, you're going to love it so much. And Dude. now, now yeah. I like hear myself and I'm like, oh gosh, I'm that person that I was like, eh. from early. <laughs> someone who did rooted was like, you're going to look at this book and it's going to have so many good memories. Like you're going to want to keep this on your bookshelf just to look at it. And I'm like. Oh, kill me. Like that is so. And if you're listening, she's holding a rooted book. By yeah, the way. A rooted, <laughs> the rooted like workbook. Yeah. Guess where I got mine today when before I came here? Where? Off my bookshelf there in my is. living room. I have one in my in my living room on my bookshelf and, and I look at it with, with fond notes. memories. Yeah. yeah. I know. So I'm just uh if you're tired of hearing us talk about how good it is, I was there. So it started with the skeptical face. Yeah. I started with skepticism as well, but from a different perspective. I wasn't necessarily a skeptic of how life-changing it could be, I opened up the book and I was looking at the logistics of it. And how are we going to pray for an hour? 
Yeah. We can barely get anyone to pray out loud at the end of group. It seems implausible. It seemed like there were some impossible feats. How are we going to take all of our children and do a service project together? So I looked at it and thought with skepticism, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get everybody involved and on the same playing field with this? It's a big commitment. It is a big commitment. I think that, you know, when you say 10 weeks, 10 weeks kind of has both reactions. Some people say, oh, just 10 weeks. That's great. Uh-huh. You know? And then there's other people that are like 10 weeks. That's like two months plus, right? Like, yeah. So with our, our, we were unique situations, like for rooted, that's about to run, you're going to be able to opt into doing it on Sunday nights. But for our pilot groups, we took three groups that were already existing and mm-hmm. we had them go through rooted. Yep. So it was uniquely challenging for our groups because both Sarah and I run young family groups. Mm-hmm. And so like within the first, we told everybody, you you don't want to miss more than two, yeah. which turned out to be really true. Because if you miss more than two, you really lost track of where the group was and it mm-hmm. became difficult. You couldn't follow. Um, yeah. You couldn't really follow. Um, and so it was good. But like by week three, we'd already lost half our group because you think like, I'm totally in. And then you're like, oh, actually we had the soccer team for this thing and this kid and, and or there was illness. So like if you pre-planned to miss a night, you kind of ended up knocking yourself out on an accident because you kind of needed those two nights just to handle the sick kids that came up that you couldn't predict or or whatever the case mm-hmm. was. Um, but we all agreed at the end that being there for the majority of the sessions like that was essential, an essential part of the growth that we experienced. I like, remember those conversations because I remember when I would mm-hmm. sit with your group and tell them they need to make at least eight of the 10 sessions. No more can they miss than that. And, uh-huh. and I remember there was this whole idea of like, why? Like, that doesn't make sense. You're just going to like, there's going to be people that are just going to fall off the the map with this. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then, so now to hear you say that, I know it's like the commitment is, is such an important part of becoming a more committed disciple of Jesus yeah. is really saying, you know, I'm going to prioritize this. And, not, and it's not to knock people who couldn't because of a stage or, or uh, you know, a, yeah, a time of their life, but more so, man, the, the idea of being able to commit and really like prioritize 10 weeks Mm -hmm. to really become a disciple and really, you know, dig in more into your faith and what it means to be a Christian. That's what I think does most of the powerful work. A lot of times actually is just the intentionality and then the presence of God in that. That's, that's really all it is. It's not a magical curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's just 10 set aside weeks to sit before Jesus and let the Holy spirit work in your life. That's right. And so it's, that's actually, that's it right there. There's really not, I mean, you go through a lot of stuff, but that was the magic, Mm -hmm. if you want to call it for us, was just having the time to spend. Yes. And week by week, there was an immense amount of um, bonding that happened every week, especially depending on the curriculum we were going through that week. And a lot of accountability was happening. And um, Mm -hmm. you would, you know, miss a week, come back and you're like, what happened last week? I know. And you can just feel that something something amazing happened and the Holy Spirit was working in in all of the different families that were there and as well as those that couldn't make it. Um, yeah. But you could just, it was it was important to be there at least eight of the 10 weeks and commit because it really was very bonding. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know if this happened in your groups. So I'd be really curious to know. Mm-hmm. But in our group, I think the most impacting thing that happened was that we opened up every group with a testimony. So somebody in the group... I think the intention of the testimony was supposed to be like, tell us how you became a Christian in like a minute. But what ended up happening was two members of our group would take like maybe five or 10 minutes a piece. And they just kind of like word vomited everything that brought them to becoming a Christian and becoming Jesus, like a Jesus follower. Um, And there are people that have been in our group for like three plus years that were like, that's what you were going through. We had, we had no idea. I didn't it realize, like, I didn't realize our group was the turning point for you and your Christian walk. Wow. Like, I didn't, I didn't know that, or I didn't know. We never got to just in the rhythm of a small group. We just never got around to asking, like, what was your childhood like? And so mm-hmm. to hear, like, here's how I grew up, and here's how I was first introduced to Jesus. We like left every like testimony time, being like, oh my gosh, God has done an amazing work in your like. God did that in my life. Did you know? And we were the bonding that was happening through sharing the work that you had done. I don't even know if that was the intention. Absolutely. Is that how how testimonies went in your group or were yours more like? (laughs) Kind of. Well, Michael set a timer. 
<laughs> if you know Michael, that's not surprising He's at all. He's a structured guy. He was. Yeah. He's a pretty structured guy. So if the book says you get three minutes, you get three minutes. No, if someone was really passionate and they of were course. sharing and it was something that was, um, you know, kind of Holy Spirit moving through our group, then obviously we ignored yeah, yeah. the timer. But no, for us, the the really really bonding night for us was actually the strongholds night, which I'm sure we'll get into when we get into mm. more detail, but the strongholds night yeah. was really big for us. But I did love the testimonies as well, because I, I didn't know the backgrounds of a lot of the people in our group. We are a, we are a newer group, but it was really encouraging to hear everybody be vulnerable and share, but the strongholds night really did us a number on that night. And, and that includes a lot of confession too, which is, absolutely. I mean, that when you are able to be humble and then let down some of your walls and then uh -huh. actually share with others what you're kind of struggling with or even stuck in, mm -hmm. man. And then, and then those people turn around and start praying for you. And then you get to experience, you know, by the grace of God, maybe deliverance. I mean, I don't know how you can't decide I'm going to do my life with these people for the rest of my life after uh, something like that, you know? It yes. Just, yes. You're incredibly connected after that. Yeah. We did um, uh, eventually double back and do the, the testimonies like you did. So like on the last night, we called it Testimony Palooza. We just totally invented this. <laughs> and we actually set a timer and we were like, okay, you you got to like talk about your testimony. But like now, if you were just like on an airplane and mm -hmm. someone was like, why do you go to church all the time? It's an yeah. What would you say? Yes. Yeah. Like, and so we kind of like, like, how would I say that? I don't know. Yeah. In three minutes. You, you and thought not through 30. it. Not like, you know, this person now regrets ever having asked you because you're 30 minutes in and you're crying, you know? So it's more yes. like, what's the, like, how would you share with a friend? It's good. Um, so that we eventually did that, but that's really cool. That's actually a part of the curriculum. And yes, it just it so happened that the week that we did the, the shortening your testimony to share with strangers, I was on a home build that next weekend and somebody asked me that question. So what's your story? And I said, you know what? I have been practicing for this moment. <laughs> did you I, tell them that? Was it, it in was no, it English or Spanish? It I was in English. It was, oh it was a DTS student on the campus. So yeah, she was American. But and you got I, to share your story, huh? I did. I did. And it was really cool because she said, I actually have a really, really similar story. It's very encouraging. Isn't that awesome that even yeah. though it was something that you had kind of rehearsed and almost feels like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, let it out kind of deal. It actually created a connection instantly. And I don't think we realize how powerful our testimony really is because it spurs people on towards love and good works. It also gives people hope in the middle of what they're dealing with that they can be healed and experience deliverance just like you have. And it actually gives people perspective that they're not alone in what they're going through as well. Absolutely. You know? We found in the testimony week, was really um, like releasing or freeing for our group because like you think a testimony is like, I was once addicted to heroin <laughs> and now I'm not. And the Lord can do the same for you, yes. which it is true for, for people. And you, we hear those stories because they're just miraculous, you know? Yeah. But our group had a lot of people that were like, I just was lonely and anxious and met Jesus and my life has changed. But that and was so powerful. relatable. And our group was like feeling like they had to have some sort of powerful story that or they had to have some, story. Then yeah. see it. like, I think, yes, it is a powerful story, but some sort of like more cliche I yes. know. or have like, as Brandon called it, a sexy sweatpants or wind, wind story exactly. years ago. I cannot, or you have I to have like that. a PhD, like Pete yes. to, to share who Jesus is. And so just like releasing that so that yeah. you could actually just do what God called you to do, which was, Tell people what happened to you. Yeah. You know, one of the most powerful things about your testimony is there is never and never will be a more foremost expert on your story than you. And so it's incredibly empowering to know, man, I am the foremost expert on this topic, which is my life. And so when you share that, you don't need a PhD. You don't need more training. You don't need to be somebody else because nobody is an expert like you are on what God has done in your life. I would add to that that I think that actually we learned that in our group mm -hmm. because we hadn't thought about our stories. We are mm -hmm. the foremost expert on our stories, but we hadn't thought about them. Yeah. It wasn't until I heard, you know, Rachel give her testimony that I was like, gosh, that actually happened in my life too, but you don't put them all together. And so like, kind of like how you were saying, like yeah. we find ourselves through putting the puzzle together. Like mm -hmm. you were saying on Sunday, we find yeah. ourselves through community. There was a lot of aspects for that in our group, especially people who are maybe a little on the shy side of like seeing someone else speak out helps them realize like, actually that is a part of my story and I should share that. Yes. Or like they didn't realize they were the experts in their own stories. 
And and so you kind of find that and you realize God uses community, it. Community, yeah. Yeah, which is awesome. So I was skeptical too. Like I said, I you know, I did countless Zoom meetings with different <laughs> um, you know, people that are on the rooted staff and things like that. And, you know, I asked all these questions and things, and, and part of my skepticism was that I have this just inside conviction and decision that discipleship is not most effectively done through curriculum. Mm. And so, you know, I was kind of like, so I kind of felt this resistance within myself. Did anybody else, when you kind of like saw this book and it was like, kind of like, oh man, this feels like a curriculum. Now, now Rooted will claim they are not a curriculum. It's a discipleship experience, not a discipleship curriculum. Yeah. But but did anyone else like look at it and kind of think, you know, it's a curriculum. What are we just going to do a Bible study through a bunch of different topics and somehow it's going to transform my life? Did anyone <laughs> else feel those same skepticisms? Well, I am definitely an experienced person, but I am a teacher by trade. So curriculum <laughs> oh, and like, experience together. I thought this married the two very beautifully. It really did. Um, but yeah. again, that's just, that was my personality, it really um, bode well with me. But there were some people in our group who, you know, doing a, a Bible study of, I guess, not curriculum <laughs> every day seemed a little bit overwhelming. But as you saw the fruit from it, yeah. it almost became a joy, something that I looked forward to every day. I do like a little bit of structure because if I don't have structure, I will not do it. That is just my brain. So I, I like that too. <laughs> uh, I, I I like some structure. Um, of the three couples in our group that that lead our group, um, one of them was very much like, we don't need a curriculum. We need to move the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Like what? Why? I'm not sure this is right for us. I remember that. Um, and there was another person who was just like, oh, another thing to do. And then by the end of Rooted, that same guy. Um, he was talking with his wife later and he was like, so, um, Rooted's done now. Um, do you just want to do it again with me? We'll just go right through it again. And she was <laughs> like, no, he just finished it. But he found that that structure helped him. It took away some of the like emotional angst of like, I don't know what to do Open the Bible and read or pray or something. And he like started to th like thrive in that. Yeah. To have like, it's enough structure to just kind of keep you on track, but it's mm -hmm. not so much structure that you're like, feel like you're back in school and your teacher's going to get mad at you because you didn't finish your assignment. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's a great way to put it, where it had enough structure, yeah. but it was also whatever you wanted to put into it and get out of it and experience. It was it, it really kind of left it up to you. But absolutely, actually diving in and doing it and spending time on it really had a lot of fruit. And I think that's what it is, you know, is really just it's enough structure to set up the experience. Yeah, yes, exactly. And so, which yes. is why they call it a discipleship experience more than a curriculum. Because although there is some information, some study, some mm -hmm. conversation that kind of goes into it, there's a structure of these seven rhythms that you start to incorporate into your life. Super great. Um, and we'll, we'll go over those in a, in a minute here. But, you know, there's, there's all these different elements to it, but it's just enough structure so that your group can experience the presence of God with mm -hmm. one another and also experience growing together, which creates a lot of bonding mm -hmm. and a lot of vulnerability, which also mm -hmm. creates more bonding. And so here's a three kind of, if, if I had to break it down, I would say the the secret sauce of Rooted can be broken Ooh. down into three different things. Secret sauce. I would say number one, oh, you love that term, don't you? You like secret sauce. I also sauce. just like secret sauce. When I go somewhere like, <laughs> do you wanna have the whatever <laughs> sauce? I'm like, yes. The secret sauce is like, it's just mayonnaise. I'll take it. Exactly. But, <laughs> but is it a secret? I'm not a condiment gal, so I could care less about secret <laughs> sauce, but I do want to hear your secret sauce. I'll tell you my secret rooted. sauce about Rooted. Number one, I think Rooted is risky. And what I mean by that is that it's just risky enough that it takes enough commitment and buy-in on your part that's a little bit extra compared to what you might do on your own. I mean, this idea that we're going to call you and say, you need to participate really as close as you can to all 10 weeks mm -hmm. of this thing. You need to prioritize and commit to it. This may not be the right time for you. We'll do it every group session. So if, if yeah. you can't do it this session, then wait until you can really commit to it. Mm -hmm. Commit to it in a strong way. There's actually a little bit of buy-in as well. It's not very expensive. It's $25 yeah. for the It's whole emotionally 10 weeks. risky though. It's emotionally risky. You know, it we really started is. week one from like, yeah, there's some hard things going on in my life. Mm -hmm. And it's like rooted pushes you to be like, if that's where you want to be, that's where you're going to stay. And yeah. you're never going to experience the depth of, of what Jesus has for you. If that's all your, the vulnerability you're willing to give him. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So then by the end, people are like, here's the five things I did this week that were stupid. And I'm like, I, I don't want to ever do them again. But in that you grow, you, you're, you have a community of people that receives that mm-hmm. it helps you take it to Jesus. So good. And then you experience healing and growth. And that's, that's, that's part of why rooted works. Mm-hmm. Because it creates an atmosphere, an ecosystem mm-hmm. is actually what Rooted would call it, an ecosystem and discipleship where there's a vulnerability piece. And so there's, whenever you're wanting to grow in something, there are expenses yeah. to it. And so there's a financial expense that's very small, $25. There's a time expense, like mm-hmm. I said, not only is it 10 weeks, you you know this as well, five times a week you're doing what? Just your own small readings. Your mm-hmm. own devotion. You're reading the Bible. You're journaling, hopefully. Yeah. Like, And what you put into it is what you get from it, just like anything else in life. And then there's, like you're saying, a comfort expense. Because um, you mentioned earlier, praying for an hour sounds oh awfully uncomfortable. Some, some people have not prayed for five minutes in front of other people. Some people have never prayed in front of other people. That was the experience in our group. A lot of people had never really prayed in front of somebody else. Oh, we had the same too. And so to pray out loud. It's uncomfortable. For an hour. Honestly, the experience was amazing. Hmm. I think a lot of ideas about prayer were broken that night. So good. And like a that. lot of experiences where prayer were, were broken that night. Yeah. And next week, we couldn't get onto our lesson, like our normal, because we were so busy talking about the fruit of the prayer from the week before. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And we didn't realize when we had the prayer night that that wasn't actually the fruit, that the fruit was to come. Hmm. It's how, true. How long did it take into that prayer night, speaking of which, to where, because I'm sure at the beginning it was like, this is extremely uncomfortable. Maybe crickets even, maybe you as leaders were felt like, let me lead this a little bit, but let me try to draw you out. When did it start to kind of get into a groove? Did it ever? I would say Michael did a lot of work up front. Michael's my husband and he does a lot of the leading in our group. Yeah, He did a lot of work up front to kind of set the expectations. Hey, in two weeks, we're going to pray. And I really want you in your own time. If you're not comfortable praying in front of people, start start talking to God about that now in your own time. We're going to do that in a couple of weeks. We're going to do that next week. And, um, he, we were praying about it before we came, he set up, you know, for this amount of time, as the book kind of sets up, we're going to pray about this for this amount of time. We're going to pray about this. And Michael set it up for, um, you know, 25 minutes. We're going to just go around 25 minutes. We're going to popcorn. Just do it. If you want 25 minutes, we're just going to sit here Mm -hmm. and pray silently. We also set up another room where couples or individuals could go and pray by themselves mm-hmm. alone, and there were topics there that they could pray for. So I think um, having a little bit of of structure, but also being willing to let the Holy Spirit lead was really, really helpful. It's powerful. And Michael's timer went off, and we all said, I cannot believe that that was already an hour. We were just going to keep going. We were still praying. It was amazing. That's I could awesome. not believe it. Did you experience something similar? We did the Mariah. same. And if you're listening and you have like no idea what we're talking about, each week you do a different topic. Mm-hmm. So like our first week we talked about like who is God. Um, we did a week on prayer. We did a week on how does God view money? We did a week on service. Mm-hmm. Yes, on strongholds. Like what are sins that have a hold on you in your life and confession? So every week had a different topic on prayer week. We didn't really talk that much about prayer. We just prayed. Yeah. And so our group time was two hours long and we did ours differently than yours. We started with 45 minutes of silent individual prayer. So we scattered, everyone scattered. You could have only a journal and a notebook because some people were like, can I take my Bible thinking I'll just read for, for 45 minutes. That'll be easier. And we were like, no Bible. I'm like, Got you'll never hear me say that again. <laughs> uh, you'll never hear me say that again, but no, no Bible. Um, so we did 45 minutes like that. And then we did 45 minutes of group prayer where it was kind of like, pray if you like, Someone just pop out a prayer request and someone else just jump up and pray for it. And so, you know, they started with like only the big things like my grandma's sick, you know, or whatever. And we had to really like in the middle of the prayer, I'm like, hey, guys, I just want to encourage you. It does not have to be life shattering to like ask for a prayer request right now. And so we start getting into the small things like, uh, well, we need a contractor at our house next week. We can't find anyone. I'm like, great. Someone prayed for that. Um, and it was so releasing in our group to realize you don't have to have this, like my mom died to ask for prayer. Yeah, Like you can ask for prayer because you're just had a really 
you and your kid are having a fight over whether they should play Roblox. You can ask for prayer for that small thing. Yes. And then, you and know. you can pray yourself in response yes. to those things. Yes. That's awesome. And so then we were like shocked that the time was done too. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. I love it because it sounds like throughout that experience specifically that a lot of paradigms were shifted about what people thought about what prayer even was. Yeah. And, and I, we asked for a lot more prayer after that. Oh, absolutely. Our prayer times in our group, even to this day, are no longer like, I pray for your goldfish. Like now people are like, this is what I need. And someone that would never pray before would be like, I'm praying for you right now. It's yeah. awesome. And yeah. just totally just that one experience. It just created a rhythm in their life that they continue to carry on Yeah, over and over again. So secret sauce number two, secret sauce number one, rooted is risky. Yeah. Secret sauce number two, rooted is experiential, which you kind of mentioned as well. My favorite, if you don't know me at all, my favorite value of ours at Rice City Church is- <laughs> Action oriented? Is that we are action oriented. <laughs> and so with rooted, you engage in the difference making. Like honestly, you get to be part of a serve experience. You get to respond by praying for other people. You get to share your testimony. It's not just about learning. I think that in our church life, it's easy for us to get conditioned to be people who would always kind of, you know, leave it to the pastors to to talk about, you know, the word of God or leave it to someone else to share their testimony or or to lead the service projects or yeah. the 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 moments of sharing your faith and so forth. You know, I, I don't evangelize. I'll, I'll bring them to, to the guy at my church that's the evangelist and yeah. so forth. And, and, and all of a sudden through rooted, you start to experience what it's like to formulate your story. And then someone mm-hmm. comes up and says, you know, what's your story? And you're like, I know it, you know, and I know how to communicate it. Yeah. And then you actually become someone engaged in the difference making in your own life. And that sure. transforms you in a huge way. Um, also, I love this idea that belonging and becoming happen simultaneously. In other words, you build community through shared growth as disciples of Jesus. And so you end up belonging with other people as you are becoming and growing and becoming a more committed disciple of Jesus Christ as well. And so there's an experiential element to it as well. And then the last secret sauce element and, and this is huge, is that rooted is lifelong. And and I love mm-hmm. what you were kind of pointing to a little bit mm-hmm. with prayer is that what you do and, and, and <laughs> is there a way to maybe, maybe we can even put it in the show notes if that's a possibility. I can actually put in the a graphic that shows the seven rhythms of rooted. Oh, yeah. And we'll talk through those in a minute here, as well as the framework of what those 10 weeks look like. You know, week one, you do this. Week two, you do this. Week three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll put that in the show notes if you're curious about what that looks like. But it's it's not about just a 10-week process or, or experience or curriculum where you learn some things. It's something that, and I love you know, what that guy in your group's re- reaction was, let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's something that are rhythms that you keep on doing over and over again, because yeah. here's a cool thing. You might have a prayer experience mm-hmm. one night of your group, but it becomes a defining factor of every person's relationship with Jesus in that group right. for the rest of their life. So same with serving, same with generosity, same with, you know, you go down the list. And so it really develops these seven rhythms. What are some other things that you saw in your groups about how people develop lifelong rhythms in their lives? I I have many answers for that. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I'll just go with one though. I know we did a week where we talked about using our money that we have to yeah. pour into the community pour into the church, be generous, and how that changes lives. And I've seen a lot of generosity from the people in our group. We um, we did a service project together as well. And over the last couple of weeks, there's been an opportunity that Michael and I have had to step into the lives of a refugee family from Afghanistan that just moved to Lakeside. And we didn't have all the resources to provide the things that they needed for their six children. And we asked our group, and everyone was really incredibly generous and helped us, whether it was them giving a ride mm-hmm. for us. We had bikes to take to a bike shop. Uh, we bought bikes for them. Someone purchased a laptop. Someone you know, bought the, the, they paid for the expenses to have the bikes tuned up, just things like that. It was, so it was cool. really amazing to just see the generosity pour from a lot of the people in our group. And I like to think that's 
because we really did grow in this experience through Rooted. And we just talked about how to use our money to glorify God. And I think that was very impactful for this family. I actually just went back and saw them this last week and uh, they're doing really well. So I'm really thankful for our group. Cool. It was really cool. I love that. My brain kind of went a different direction than okay. that. Um, when, during the Rooted experience, we, the normal leaders of our group led for the first three weeks. And after that, we had different people in our group lead that had never led before. Ooh. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. And um, we saw a different side to people we had never seen before. And many people in our group, when it was their turn to lead, led far better than normally I lead. And um, previous to that, our previous to Rooted, our group um, was really close. And um, but sometimes we would struggle during our actual Bible study time. Like it would kind of be like involved. Mariah asks a question. Everyone tries hard not to make eye contact with her so she doesn't <laughs> choose them. And then um, one of the other co-leaders in the group answers the question, hopes of getting something kickstarted yep. kind of a deal. Um, but after Rooted, as we all took turns sharing leadership, we all got to hear different perspectives from different people. And it broke up the like monotony of like, it's either Mariah talking at me or Brandon talking at me. And we now had different like yep. perspectives and people stepping in and it's forever changed the um, way that each person in our group approaches their spiritual life. Now, instead of coming, waiting for Mariah or Brandon to say something that, that tickles their fancy that helps yeah. them in their spiritual life, mm -hmm. they're going after, how can I better understand what was said? How could I say that to somebody else? You know, I think I have something I want to share with the group. Can I share it? Um, and so it just, I think it's changed us in a lifelong like as a teacher, we would say lifelong learners, mm -hmm. like went from being um, like happy to come and, and hear the word to being engaged members of understanding the word and giving your understanding to others. So much so that for this session of Rooted, I ended up hitting up a lot of people that were in both of your groups yeah. to be our leaders yeah. for Rooted groups this session. There are so many that are more than capable in mm -hmm. our group. Absolutely. And and I've seen those leadership qualities come out of them, but mm -hmm. also just their their hunger and their growth spurs on other people. I can't tell yeah. you how many people I called up and said, listen, I see what God's doing in your life mm -hmm. and other people need to see it too, because it will, it'll push them to want to grow in their own lives. And it's not just their giftedness that came to the table, but it was the giftedness fueled by the confession mm. and the vulnerability yeah. of like, I told my group, the things about me that kind of suck. And I got to bring those to Jesus because my group helped me do that. And that fueled me to want to use my gifts more. Yeah. So it's not just this, like we shined up a bunch of people and, and now they can do it. But like there was interior change through confession and redemption through Jesus that put gas in the tank for this. And almost like called out those insecurities that were yeah. keeping them from taking next steps in their Yeah, because we all have them. Jesus. Yeah. And just not calling them out doesn't make them go away. Absolutely. It actually kind of empowers them when we don't call them out. So to experience a small chunk of the church where we could be fully vulnerable and then bring that to Jesus. And it's not one of those, it's one of those um, come as you are, don't stay as you are. Nobody yep. was like, oh, you're struggling with that? Yeah. Oh, good for you. <laughs> you know, but it was like, yeah, and I have also done that. And I brought that to Jesus and he's overcome that in my life. And you're going to have that experience when you bring it to him. So good. Like, here's what it looks like. Let's st start taking the next step towards it. In that yeah. Way. So from yeah. that, we're now producing leaders that want to go give that freedom to other people. Absolutely. Through the rooted experience. Yes. And the couple that you asked from our group mm -hmm. to help. Uh, I was, um, I don't know. I was just really touched this morning when I looked back at this journal, we wrote prayers for everybody in our group. I don't know if you guys did that in your group, but at the end of the session, we were able to write prayers for each individual and pray that over them. And the prayer that I have written in this journal, I looked at it this morning for the um, the woman that you asked to lead the Ruta group. Jess Ian and Mark and Jess Ian. <laughs> I'm just uh, going to call them out. Oh, you know, yes, awesome. yes. Jess Ian and, um was that she would let go of her fear and anxiety and let God use her as a leader. That awesome. was the prayer I literally wrote for her and prayed over her at the last rooted session that we had. And here she is. She's they both out. are. And so growing, it's amazing. Like crazy. Yeah. I'm, so yeah. the Holy Spirit really does move. He does. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
so, you know, I kind of mentioned this in, in the message yesterday, but I mentioned that we all have rhythms in our lives, things mm-hmm. that we commit to on a daily basis, mm-hmm. um, whether it's as simple as brushing our teeth or um, going to bed at a certain time or a routine that we have in the shower. And I kind of challenged and asked and said, out of all of your daily routines, your daily rhythms, how many of them are actually taking you to Jesus? And that's what Rooted is really all about. It's about developing rhythms in your life that daily, continually take you to Jesus. And the seven rhythms of Rooted that they have structured and outlined that you go through within those 10 weeks are daily devotion, which is really just reading your Bible, spending time with Jesus, hearing from God, prayer, repentance, which is that Mm -hmm. stronghold night like you were talking about, sacrificial generosity, serving the community, sharing your story and worship. Now, when you hear those rhythms again, and I know that you guys are very intimately acquainted with them because you went through these Mm -hmm. in a very thorough way, what are some things that you see even in your experience as leaders, like your personal lives that you have seen strengthened through your experience with Rooted? Rooted, excuse me. (laughs) All of them. All of them. (laughs) Um, did you say as me personally or as yes, in our group? As you personally, as a leader. I think sometimes we can, it, it might be easier to identify what's happening in our group. All but the thing is, is that even going through it as a leader, there's transformation that happens for you too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, I would say for me, repentance. Because um, like I, I, people probably don't know a lot about this, but I have a lot of anxiety that I, I manage And, um, it's hard for me to be repentant because I hate to admit that I may have hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. So like to take daily time to practice saying like, God, I got frustrated with my husband and I said something mean to him. And I think I said it on purpose because I was upset Mm -hmm. and I don't, I want to own that. And I want to repent of that is such an important practice because, um, we usually spend so much time trying to be like, no, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm a good person. And that's, that's, we're afraid to repent because we think that means we're not a good person. Uh, but that's kind of the message of the gospel is that God yeah. says, you're actually not a good person, but that it has nothing to do with my desire to love you. Because mm-hmm. hmm. our culture thinks that if you're not a good person, then you're unlovable. Yeah. It's based on what you deserve. Right. And you, everybody desperately wants to be loved. And that's, yeah. that's Jesus' message is that you don't have to be perfect to be lovable. And mm-hmm. I want to love you anyway. So it's not until we practice repentance fully and honestly that we can receive the love that we desperately need yeah amen because if we're in denial about needing forgiveness then we can't receive it but it but our our block is on the reception side yeah we're desperately thirsty for it but we have to first say that we're thirsty and that's too shameful Mm -hmm. um and so for me it was a great rooted was a a powerful time for me Hmm. to to be able to say like here's some of the things that i struggle with that fuel my anxiety um, and they're so petty that I hate to even admit them. But in that admittance, you get God's love, which breaks the cycle. Mm-hmm. You know, so I would say the practice of repentance was great for me. It was really freeing. Wow. For me, I would say prayer and serving the community were mm-hmm. two rhythms that really uh, were impactful for me. I I grew up in church. My dad's a pastor. I have been around prayer my whole life, but just having the ideas of what prayer should look like and should be were amazing to spend time just being quiet and listening. I think a lot of times our our lives are so fast mm-hmm. that we don't take time to listen. We just kind of, God, can you do this or can you do that? And help me with this and Shoot amen. Shoot a few arrows. <laughs> exactly. And to actually take time to stop and listen and dwell in the presence of the Lord was very impactful for me. So I really appreciated that, just having a different perspective. It was modeled for me growing up, but I never really took it as part of my own life until now. And then serving the community, again, we're just, we're we're busy. We got kids, we got a lot going on, and we purposefully began cutting out time and days in our schedule to make that a priority because we saw the fruit in it, we saw how it changes our daughters mm-hmm. and how yeah. it's going to impact them. So we definitely made some sacrifices schedule wise to cut out time to serve the community. And that was very impactful for us. 
And can I just say, you and Michael are inspiring how much you. you like sacrificially serve. Um, I, and I, I don't need to go off on too many accolades because I'll start making Sarah blush here. <laughs> oh my but, um, but Sarah's honestly, never coming back. <laughs> I know. But honestly, I mean, I have seen how you two and your whole family have leveraged your lives and have committed to being servant leaders everywhere you go and actually even going to new places. <laughs> you guys actually went through great lengths to actually create a partnership with YWAM in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And you go there on a continual basis to be hosts for teams coming across the border to do things like build houses and serve in different ways. And so, man, you two and your whole family are really making a difference. And I want you to know that it, it doesn't just make a difference directly. It also makes a difference inspirationally in that way. Well, thank you. So, that is a goal we have is yeah. to inspire families to be a little bit sacrificial Absolutely. in you how do. they serve, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that is a, definitely a big motivator for us to Jeez. show you can do it. Jeez. It's hard. It's not easy, but you could do it and it's worth it. Mm -hmm. And we learned that through doing the rooted study. Well, I hope that through our conversation today, if you're listening, that you're a little bit inspired, a little challenged um, to maybe start praying about and envisioning what is it going to look like for you, for maybe your spouse or someone else in your family, a friend or someone that you want to even bring along with you to do this, to really engage and commit to 10 weeks of Rooted. We start September 10th. You can find out more information at ricecitychurch.com slash events. You'll see a an opportunity to sign up for Rooted there. You can also go to experiencerooted.com, which is the Rooted website You can to learn more. There's a lot of different ways that you can try to figure out what this looks like. You can also just call me or email me, robert at ricecitychurch.com. I'd love to um, answer any questions, but I can't encourage you enough. And I'm sure Mariah, Sarah, you'd Agreed. agree. Yep. Man, consider this for your life because it'll change it, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's not magic. It's just... Jesus. It's just Jesus. It's, it's just the, the presence Holy of God. Spirit yeah. In your life. Yeah. Never regret it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this time on Digging Deeper. We'll see you next time. <laughs>